Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into hormonal acne, and I'm gonna be answering your questions about when exactly blood work may be necessary to figure out if there is a problem with your hormones. But before getting into it, give this video a thumbs up if you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist. Be sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on, that way YouTube will let you know as soon as my videos go live. Hormonal acne, often in reference to acne that occurs in adult women, most often in the jawline with these red painful bumps, as well as closed comedones, otherwise known as whiteheads, on the forehead. And it is largely influenced by hormones, especially with changes in the menstrual cycle, around breastfeeding, menopause. However, truthfully, all acne is hormonal. Hormones are what plays a role in the production of sebum, otherwise known as oil. Some people's follicles or pores are more sensitive to certain hormones. They produce more oil and are more acne prone. It's not just in adult women where you have to think about the hormones, but adult acne in women tends to have a large hormonal component to it. A handful of treatments do in fact target the hormonal component of acne, but nothing that you can buy over the counter that you apply to the skin really addresses that issue. Androgen hormones, namely testosterone and the potent form of testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, are what play a role in hormonal acne. Hormones like insulin-like growth factor, as well as the stress hormone cortisol, likewise can lead to more sebum production. While acne in adult women can be a sign of androgen excess, it's not always the case, and in many cases, hormone levels are actually completely normal. It may be the fact that the follicle in certain individuals, aka the poor, is a lot more sensitive to hormones that are normally present in everyone's body. So it's often unnecessary and a waste of resources to just check hormones. Warning signs that there is an underlying problem with the hormones that warrant actual testing of the hormones include hirsutism, which is the development of hair growth in more of a male pattern, like growth on the chest, uh, the chin, the neck, coarse, dark, terminal hairs. That would be a red flag for an underlying hormonal problem that would need to be checked with blood work. If you're dealing with new onset adult acne and you're a woman and you also have uh, pattern hair loss, otherwise known as androgenetic alopecia. This is a type of hair loss in which the hair follicles are very sensitive to those male hormones and you get miniaturization of the hairs. That leads to thinning, typically starts presenting as a widening of the central part. I have a lot of videos on androgenetic alopecia, but if you had a patient who for the first time and maybe a long time or for the first time ever as an adult is getting really inflammatory acne, has failed multiple different types of treatment, and is also showing signs of androgenetic alopecia, this might be a reason to check hormones. A sign that there's a problem with the hormones is something called virilization in women. That's a deepening of the voice, clitoromegaly, along with other signs of androgen excess. Adult acne coupled with problems with fertility would also be a reason to consider more blood work to check the hormone levels. Likewise, if you are having irregular infrequent periods, known as oligomenorrhea, or if you have had a complete absence of a period, amenorrhea, that is a red flag that hormone testing may likely be beneficial for you. And importantly, if out of the blue, out of nowhere, you have the sudden onset of severe cystic acne, that would suggest there may be something underlying going on. Probably the most common situation that's going to kick off needing to check blood work is polycystic ovary syndrome. Here, not only can you have uh, inflammatory adult acne, but you also can have hirsutism androgenetic alopecia, and irregular periods or amenorrhea, as well as infertility. So if you've got cystic acne, plus some of these other signs and symptoms, there's a good chance your doctor is going to want to check some additional blood work to evaluate for hyperandrogenism. Are they going to check every single hormone? No, that wouldn't make sense. First thing they're going to want to check is a free and total testosterone. Free testosterone is commonly elevated in women who have PCOS. Not always, but it is commonly elevated. But reasons for hyperandrogenism are not just PCOS. Uh, if you have a total testosterone greater than 200 nanograms per deciliter, that's actually very strongly suggestive that you might have a tumor in your ovaries producing high amounts of androgens. Another possible reason besides PCOS and an ovarian tumor is some people are born with uh, problems with 
how the hormones are produced in the adrenal gland. And a blood test to check for that is 17-hydroxyprogesterone. 17-hydroxyprogesterone levels greater than 200 nanograms per deciliter suggest a condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. If you've ever gotten blood work done to check hormone levels, there's a good chance your doctor checked something called DHEAS. DHEAS kind of gives us a snapshot of hormone production from the adrenal glands. Other labs that can be helpful in this situation are checking the ratio of luteinizing hormone to follicle stimulating hormone, otherwise known as LH and FSH. A ratio of LH to FSH greater than three to one suggests possible PCOS. If the patient is also complaining of a headache, we might check something called prolactin because uh, they may actually have a problem in the pituitary gland, um, a, a tumor there causing headache and increased amounts of the hormone prolactin. And we may check something called sex hormone binding globulin. When it comes to these hormone labs though in women, it's really important to check them the right time. You wanna check these levels during the early morning in the first three days of the menstrual cycle. It's also important that if you are already on any type of hormonal therapy, like birth control pills, you need to be off of these medications for at least six weeks prior to having these labs drawn in order to get accurate results. Other relevant labs in this situation are gonna include a fasting blood glucose and fasting lipid, because in the case of, say for example, PCOS, you can have some abnormalities in these profiles as well, it may be worthwhile checking cortisol, and it may also be worthwhile to check thyroid stimulating hormone to evaluate for a possible thyroid disease. Speaking of thyroid, if you missed my video on the nail signs of thyroid disease, definitely check that out. I also have another video, as a side note, on the skin signs of hypothyroid or low thyroid disease. So check those out because it kind of, you know, may go along with what we're talking about here. You may be interested in that. So those are the labs that may be checked, but just as a reminder, not always is this necessary. A lot of adult women have hormonal acne and there's no other indication that they have a problem with the hormone levels. It may just be more so that the follicles in the skin are a lot more sensitive to hormones. So in many cases, blood work is simply not necessary. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to identify anything new. It's very unlikely that you have a problem with the hormones if all you have, for example, is really stubborn acne and you don't have any of these other signs and symptoms. So to go through, the process of trying to get the blood work at the right time, uh, fasting in the first three days of the menstrual cycle. Sometimes it's just a waste of effort and not helpful to you as a patient, more of a headache, and it doesn't illustrate anything new, provide any new information. So everything is always taken together when we're talking about a patient. It's not a one size fits all approach. That's when you might need blood work, but real quick, I'm gonna talk about two treatments for hormonal acne in women. First is oral contraceptive pills. Now I have a whole video going into detail about what the best oral contraceptive pill is for acne. So check that out. I explain more about birth control pills and the treatment of acne. Specifically, it's the estrogen component of oral contraceptive pills that helps to provide some control in terms of sebum production. Not only does it lower sebum production, but oral contraceptive pills, the estrogen component also lowers free testosterone and it also raises something called sex hormone binding globulin. Again, the more sex hormone binding globulin that you have, the less free testosterone you're going to have circulating around to cause breakouts in the skin. Oral contraceptive pills also can inhibit the enzyme 5-alpha reductase, which is responsible for converting testosterone to the more potent form dihydrotestosterone. It's that dihydrotestosterone that is a key player in not only acne, but in female pattern hair loss. Oral contraceptive pills also can decrease ovarian and adrenal production of androgens. With oral contraceptive pills alone, you can get anywhere from a 40 to 70% reduction in the number of acne lesions. That's birth control pills, but another medication that is prescribed for hormonal acne is gonna be spironolactone. This is a what's referred to as a potassium sparing diuretic. It's actually a blood pressure pill, 
but at doses between 50 to 100 milligrams per day, it actually can inhibit androgens. It can be used alone or in conjunction with oral contraceptive pills. So efficacy rates with spironolactone vary anywhere from 33% to 85% reduction in the number of acne spots. Spironolactone also can improve hirsutism and it can be used at higher doses to treat androgenetic alopecia. I have a video, as a side note, all about spironolactone for androgenetic alopecia. So check Check that video out if you missed it. I'll link it down below. So those are medications that can be given to women for the hormonal component of acne. They're not indicated or safe to use in men. Can men get hormonal acne? As I said at the beginning of this video, all acne has a hormonal component to it. Um, while men can't be given these medications, we do have a newer medication called Winlevy, which is a medication you put on the skin rather than a pill that you take by mouth. And it can be used in men and women, and it addresses the hormonal component of acne, that hormonal component driving oiliness in the skin. It can safely be used in men and women. It is a newer medication, and for the most part, it's not something that is really useful as a standalone treatment, but rather as an add-on. So for example, if you're somebody who has been using another type of acne treatment, getting decent results, adding on this new medication may get you even better results. So that's everything about hormonal acne. On the end slate, I'm actually going to link my recent video all about this new hormonal medication, Winlevy. So definitely check that out. If you just click on the thumbnail on the end slate, it'll take you to that video. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.